Over the last couple of years, we've seen quite a number of Good reports, um, especially that I can recall of, that have been pointing to the problem of uh, inequality in South Africa. It seems to be growing. The situation does not seem to get better. What are the driving factors behind this? Well, I think part of the driving factor is obviously as a legacy of apartheid. I think that's always a starting point. Uh, due to the you know mass dispossession of black people primarily, that's why we're sort of the most affected by uh, inequality. But I think in the last five or ten years or so, particularly under uh, the leadership of pre former President Jacob Zuma, we've seen quite depressed growth coming from the previous period of Tabombeki. But uh, I think the Tabombeki period in itself, despite being a high growth period, led to increasing inequality because uh, it was jobless growth. What was always termed as jobless growth as a result uh, led to rising in unemployment despite the fact that we had uh, high growth but then in the Jacob Zuma uh, era we've seen depressed growth and in fact over the last uh, the last three or five years or so we've seen growth almost grinding to a, a complete halt and I think last year was primarily saved as a result of rising business confidence and the, and the change in political leadership in the ANC which resolved uh, a lot of the political uncertainty ahead of the 2019 elections uh, which was curtailing growth because what this means to investors is that there's a lot of polit policy uncertainty. There was also uncertainty as a result of reshuffling of ministers and so they don't have a quite predictable business environment which makes them sluggish to invest. And as a result they create less jobs and this is the main driver uh, behind the high inequality. As a result of high unemployment people don't have incomes which is also uh, part of the thing that keeps them in the poverty cycle. You know, the bulk of this burden is really being uh, borne by black South Africans. And when we look at the kind of skills that are then being put into the economy and what the economy needs in order to create sustainable employment, talk to me about some of the gaps that, that exist within that, 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 that need, that, that demand and actually what is, what is supplied. Sure. Um, so you've heard a lot about the STEM skills, the science, technology, engineering, and mathematical type of skills. And I think there's, despite um, the shortage we currently have, there's been quite a strong uh, you know, push and enrollment in students in these areas such as engineering and the, and the sciences. But where South Africa has a huge gap is around apprenticeship type of skills or you know vocational skills and that's as a result of uh, you know a strong emphasis on university education which churns out bachelor's degrees and you know the scientific masters and postgraduate degrees but doesn't provide the skills that are needed for you know the mechanic on the side of the road plumbing skills etc although we've seen a slight shift you know under the you know the the reforms driven by the department of higher education and training uh, vocational schools and vocational training still has a low profile in, in terms of the education system in South Africa, but also the quality and the readiness of the education in terms of preparing young people for the workplace has always been a challenge. Uh, fortunately, uh, you know, there have been some policy changes recently, such as the free education, which should open up doors and, you know, provide more education to more poorer students, allowing them to transition perhaps out of poverty. But there's still some gaps that exist in the labor market in terms of labor market inequalities between the skills that are demanded, primarily perhaps in services and financial sector, and where the economy needs to grow, which is around vocational skills, as well as industrial capacity, because really this is what the country needs to revitalize in order to have sustainable growth moving forward. You know, you, you speak about the access that, of course, is created then within the higher education sector, um, but you're looking at the very least four years um, that would be required at least for a fresh crop of uh, potential employees into the job market. Do you think that there are any more immediate interventions that can be put in place to ensure that the poor and the vulnerable in our society um, are perhaps better equipped um, to provide skills and to be empowered because they continue to be the ones bearing the bulk of of the burden of this inequality and yet they seem to be no clear way of um, upskilling them to help them break out of the cycle. 
Yes, I think um, the, you know, in terms of the interventions that are in place, they fine and few in between. I think the government, definitely private sector particularly, can do a lot more in terms of taking in younger skills and developing that skill. It's positive that you know l last week or the week before, the president inaugurated the Youth Employment Service, which will start creating opportunities for young people. But I think the challenge in South Africa cannot just be resolved through employment. I think what we need to develop is a young class of entrepreneurs but in a situation where you have such you know low incomes and high inequality people don't have the kind of safety net that you need in order to experiment with business and entrepreneurship and so it becomes a catch-22 what I think needs to happen is that we need to promote more youth entrepreneurship but also integrating them into the large corporate and existing value chains in order to give them the practice that they need to be you know successful in, at business on their own I think just looking at the you know, employment opportunities and the education system is a start and it's a positive start, but we need to encourage and enable uh, entrepreneurship in order to create more jobs because that's the only way forward. One of the other things that's highlighted in the report is um, the issue of spatial planning and the fact that there doesn't seem to be clear integration between uh, the economic hubs as it were and your informal settlements and perhaps your even more rural areas. Do you think that that is an avenue that could be um, one of opportunity for government to look at and including the private sector of course? Definitely. I think the working class through multiple you know, outlets of the struggle have always continued to say, let's start building factories and townships as opposed to just you know, constructing malls. Um, this is what we're talking about. And, and this is also as a result of the apartheid legacy, which put people in sort of these you know, labor enclaves and townships, etc., which are far from you know, the urban centers where people do find jobs. And I think, A, this is discouraging for young people who are unemployed, because before you can actually you know, master the confidence to go look for a job, you need to get transport monies, etc. And already the working class black South Africans spend quite a considerable amount on transport alone. I think estimates range between 40 to two thirds of income just on transportation alone. And so the spatial legacy can only be undone by moving where we invest in the real estate, by bringing opportunities closer to where young black people are, but also by revitalizing you know, what uh, you know, in Gauteng has been termed the township economies in order to create a space where there's agglomeration where you know, informal small township business can benefit from being closer to big existing formal businesses. And I think this is one of the things that you know, business sector and private sector in South Africa certainly has not been looking at and it's been continuously overlooked because I think the primary focus has been on creating employment or in reducing unemployment. All right, Sia Beniza from PESA, thank you for joining us on Newsnight tonight.